good day. This is a pretty shocking video. I'm going to get to the point, which is that I drove this a couple of days ago, about four and a half kilometers, which is about three miles for our American and UK friends. And the car chewed through about 30 kilometers of battery. And when I say about 30, I think it was actually 32. So today I decided to record it while we're still in this extreme cold. This is my Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. And to get directly to the point, I chewed through 130 kilometers of battery for 34 kilometers of actual driving. Now, there was a fair amount of parked time where I sat in the car waiting for people. And beyond that, I have never had the drain on the battery be this extreme. And I've driven in the same temperatures previously. I had a 2019 Model 3 Standard Range Plus, and now I've got my 2021. I've also driven it since. This video was recorded in similar weather. And while it has drained, it was nothing like I happened to capture on this video. So I'm gonna speed most of this video up so I don't waste your time. But if you're buying an electric car, you should be aware that this is something that can happen. Now, when I say that, I have the bottom of the line Tesla Standard Range Plus, right? That's just, it's just the bottom of the line, except for the special order model, which I'm not gonna get into here. And that gets about 400 kilometers of range. The vast majority, and I mean 99% of my trips, and not exaggerating when I say 99%, are under 100 kilometers. In fact, the vast majority of my trips and yes, I have this logged, so it's not an opinion, it's a fact. One way, those trips are about 25 kilometers. So even with this extreme loss, I'm still fine. But it does annoy the hell out of me that Tesla's range calculation doesn't take into consideration the current temperatures or your previous driving patterns. My previous electric Fords and GMs did. So when it was really cold, they would show a lesser range. But Tesla just doesn't do that. And it's very frustrating to have such a great vehicle and an awesome piece of technology oversold like this. It doesn't need to be, and they shouldn't do it. And by the way, oh yeah, they know about it. I have spoken with them, including the service department. And another thing, yes, I have taken this into service and had them look at it. And they've said, nope, this is just fine. Everything's operating as it should be with intolerances. Something else to note before people get all upset and start screaming about how bad it is, your gas car is also going to be terrible in this extreme cold. So everybody calm down. This is not about trying to pick on anybody. This is just showing reality of electric cars. It's one of the limitations. Now, one of the things you should know is that the reason why electric cars are excellent for most families even in extreme cold, is because you probably don't have one car. You probably have a truck, an SUV. So just like your full-size truck or your SUV or whatever other vehicle you have, it isn't perfect for every single use case. My electric vehicle is only good for about 99% of my drive. What's that line on the battery? The there? On it? Oh, that's the charge line, which I'll, I will explain, actually. That's an excellent point. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, so the, the nut of it is you never... Never is not the right word. You only charge the battery to 100% when you really need it. Because batteries, not car batteries, all batteries do not like to be charged to 100%. So it's really expensive to charge a battery to 100%. That last little bit takes more energy to fill. And the batteries, you shorten their life. So, oh yeah, so Tesla says 80% is where you should charge to. And so unless you're on a road trip where you need it, just charge to 80 Hell, I've got, I've still got 288 Ks. I drove 10, right? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like 80% is, these batteries are so big. Let's get 25 K then. Mazda's got a really cool uh, little MX-30 coming out. Well, it's out, I guess, in theory. Um, they they showed it off two years ago because of COVID, they're just doing it now. Um, they're yeah. just bringing it out now. And it's a hundred and, uh, it's a hundred kilometer battery, a hundred mile battery. Wow. And you go, who's gonna drive, get a car with so, how far do you drive to work, man? City drivers, yeah. yeah. It's your second vehicle. Yeah, it, it's not going to be it's not going to be the best selling vehicle in the world, but it's a niche, right? And when you're Mazda, they don't have any electrics. So they gotta they gotta choose something to get people excited. So pick a niche.
Okay, so that's what I just drove. And as you can see, that is 8.5 kilometers. I started with 216, I'm now at 284, uh, which means that that eight and a half kilometer drive took more than 30 kilometers of electricity. Now, a couple of things. Number one, all electric vehicles have this type of problem. I can tell you from the vehicles I've owned and from reports from others as well, that Tesla is by far the worst. They are by far the most exaggerating of the uh, battery life claims and the battery distance claims. But it's still fine. Secondly, your gas mileage, if you're driving gas or diesel, will also be horrible in this weather. It's the second thing. Something that's notable for our little experiment today is this vehicle has only been charged to 100%, maybe twice. Uh, right when I first got it, I wanted to see what its range was. And uh, I had one other time where I had a bit of a drive that I needed to charge up to 100%. So this battery is far from abused. And just to tell you how new it is, this thing only has 7,000 kilometers on it. So that for easy math, let's call it 5,000 miles. So this is a relatively new battery in a Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. And you can see how the cold just kills that battery. Look, in the time that we've been talking here, the battery's dropped a few more kilometers just with me sitting here. We were not using things like the heated seats, although something to note is the heated seats use very little electricity. So when it's really cold, you should be using the heated seats. But I simply wanted to point out that we're using as little drain as possible. We didn't have any phones on the charger. We didn't have anything weird going on. It's just what you'd expect, just as I'm presenting it. No funny business. Uh, if you noticed as we were driving along, it uh, was at minus 27 for a bit, and it uh, briefly went to minus 28. Point is, it's freaking cold out there. All right, so I've just driven back to my house, and that makes it a grand total round trip of 17 kilometers, eight and a half kilometers each way. And you can see right up here that it now shows 243 kilometers remaining. All right, so we just forgot something and we have to run back to, you know, the mall, that's a little uh, eight and a half kilometer trip. I've got eight kilometers, 7.9, because this trip was a little bit shorter. And just a note here, you can see that I've got the heat turned uh, to 20 degrees. I don't have a phone on the charger and I'm not using the heated seats. Uh, now, yes, I know that the heated seats are better than the uh, using the heat pump as far as efficiency goes. However, I want the car to be warm for everybody. So I've got it and I have uh, four people in the car. So, well, three and four, depending on which trip we're talking about. So. Yes, I could turn the temperature down, but I'm not going to. I think 20 degrees is a very reasonable temperature. It's hardly high, uh, and that would help a little bit. But you can see that we're already over 100 kilometers in used range, and we've driven about 25 kilometers. So let's see what it is by the time I get all the way back home. So that 30 kilometer little trip to the mall and back twice uh, consumed 130 kilometers of battery in this extreme cold. Now the way GM and Ford handle this, at least the way they have handled it in the past, is they have an algorithm that figures out where your driving range is based on a number of factors, including the temperature and your most recent driving style. For instance, I had a Ford Fusion plug-in hybrid. And if I was driving it hard in cold temperatures, I it might charge to 20 kilometers. Whereas in the summer, if I was driving it very lightly, I actually had it charge a couple of times up to 35 kilometers. The driving range is what's calculated. That's the 183 that you see on my screen is a fictitious number that Tesla has made up. And their algorithm to calculate it is garbage. I will put a link in the top right hand corner explaining this from my 2019 Tesla Model 3. Now all of this being said, 
I still don't care. I still love my Tesla. What bothers me about them is the fanboys. The whole notion that these things are touched by the hand of God and are perfect in every way is just silliness. Now, I will say, and this is important, I believe genuinely, and I have driven everything from Lamborghinis to Chevy Chevettes, and I think I can say pretty unequivocally that Tesla today makes the best standard production vehicles on the planet. But that certainly doesn't mean they're perfect. And here's another example of where Tesla overpromises and underdelivers, and they persist on making these insane claims about range. Hey, we would really appreciate it if you would click like if you found this video useful or interesting. And subscribe is also appreciated. That's what really drives the Google algorithms. If you have a question or comment, please put them in the comment section below, or you can always get a hold of us at www.partisanissues.com. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.